Yeah. Uh, how are you supposed to drink whiskey? Welcome to First Fill, I'm Phil and I'm going to fill you in about whiskey. Today we're talking about how to drink whiskey. The golden rule is basically just drink it how you prefer. But there's some techniques and there's some principles that can help enhance your whiskey experience and also help you decide how you actually want to drink it. So which whiskey should you start off with when you're just getting into it? What I would say is don't bust your budget when you're starting out off, off with it. Don't go and buy your 32 year old Glen Farkless single cask that, I don't know, Prince Charles had signed or something. Don't, don't do that. Um, start off with the basics first, the originals first. On this channel I generally will be reviewing and talking about single malt scotch. So in terms of single malt scotch, often what's recommended is called the three Glens. Glen Morangi, Glen Fiddick, and Glen Livet. And most of them are bottled at 40%, which can be a bit easier on the palate when you're first starting out. However, when I started out on whiskey, I didn't like any of that Speyside stuff. I would also recommend trying a smoky one starting out. And I only say this is because I, what got me into whiskey was a smoky whiskey. If you try whiskey and you think you don't like it, well, go have a smoky one. And if you, if you have a smoky one and you realize you don't like it, well, go have one of the lighter Speyside ones. Um, don't completely roll it out until you've tried both ends. And it's, what's interesting is I started out smoky, really liked it. And as time went on, I grew more and more to like the non piece of whiskey. So let's talk about whiskey glasses. Now I'm not going to talk about all the whiskey glasses, there's quite a lot out of there, but I'm going to talk about more the principles behind the glasses and by understanding the principles you should be able to decide which whiskey glass in your house is going to be best for the way you want to drink your whiskey. They're separated into two camps, enjoyment and appreciation and this was a coined by Charles McLean and I think it sums it up quite well. One's great for just enjoyment, casually drinking whenever, which I do all the time, and the other one for nosing, smelling, and taking your time with, and that's more the appreciation side. So first let's start with enjoyment. All right, here we've got uh, a pint glass and a mug. Don't drink out of these if you can help it, um, only if it's the last resort, but these are not really made to be drinking whiskey, so let's let's put these away for now. The tumbler is great because it's primarily made for drinking whiskey with soda or other drinks. Um, they have very solid bases. You can put it in the dishwasher. You know, it's a great casual glass. You get home and you just want a whiskey. You don't want to think about too much. You're watching a movie. The tumbler is a great option. A very popular way to drink whiskey is called on the rocks. On the rocks basically just means drinking it with ice. So, that's on the rocks. Neat means you're just drinking whiskey by itself, where on the rocks means you're drinking it with ice. A lot of people say, oh no, never add ice to whiskey, but actually I drink ice with whiskey quite a lot, especially in the summer. You know, it's a really hot day. You don't really want to have a really a whiskey that warms you up like a smoky one you want to have something refreshing you just want to chill out hang out with your mates and the one i have the most is jameson lime i'll show you that to you easy one and this is just a classic way you can enjoy whiskey just a little bit of jameson so tumblers are really good for blends for this reason you don't really want your 32 year old thing being diluted down because it's going to be just harder to appreciate all those little intricacies about it so Go for something that's a little bit cheaper on your wallet. Add a little bit of lime. Ginger ale. However, the only thing about the tumbler is it's not the best for nosing and smelling. And a big part of taste, well they say 80% of taste is smell. And the thing is, I can't really smell much at all. The, the aromas just go completely past your nose. So if you want to appreciate it, we're going to move on to the next category, appreciation. So the first glass we're going to talk about is the sherry glass. Now, this is a wine tasting glass. I got this when I was doing some wine tastings in Burgundy in France. What you're looking for with, for appreciation whiskies 
is this tulip style. So it means there's more surface area in the bottom for the whiskey to breathe. And then at the top, it narrows down. You've got a more concentrated smell up through the top. It's got the stem here, so it means that you can hold on to it without warming the whiskey up, which is quite important, which we'll talk about in a bit. This glass, though, it is quite breakable. We have broken some. That's the one con about them. But if you've got a glass like this in your house, perfect. Um, this is going to be great for whiskey, great for smelling whiskey, um, and great for tasting whiskey. So I recommend that. Next one. Now, this one here is called the Snifter. This is mainly used for cognacs, brandies, and also whiskey. And this one has a lot of surface here. The whiskey to breathe um, and smell it through the top. This is a very common glass, great glass. I recommend it, good for appreciating whiskey. So the next glass is the Glen Caron glass. Glen Caron. This glass is specifically designed for whiskey and it's the favorite glass for a lot of people who are really into whiskey. And that's because it's an amazing nosing glass. And this is perfect for it because it's got the bulby part at the bottom which means there's lots of surface area for the whiskey to breathe and then the narrow bit at the top which concentrates the aromas up into your nose which means you can smell more of the whiskey. Now this might not be for everyone but for people really trying to smell out those flavours and stuff, perfect. And it's also got this foot at the bottom which is great because you can hold on to it at the bottom which means your hands doesn't heat up the whiskey. So we've talked about the different whiskey glasses, the principles behind them, why I would use some glasses over others. Um, but let's talk about actually what to do when you put whiskey in the glass. Let's get a bottle. Here we go. Now the first thing I like to do when I put whiskey in the glass is just to coat the edges of it. Um, it helps release the, the aromas as to the surface area. Then I just like to let it sit. Ralphie talks about a minute in the glass is a year in the cask. So this one here is a 12 year old so if you let it sit here for 12 minutes in the glass that's really good. The other thing you can do is why you let it sit. Put a little cap over the top. I've got a lens cap, but you can use anything. Pringles lid. There are professional like glass things you can put on the top, but um, just anything. So that will, that will just hold the aromas in there and they'll be building up. So then when you take it off, you'll get a whole lot of aromas. Now most whiskey experts will put a few drops of water in their whiskey and it's generally recommended. So let's talk about water. What you want to use is as pure water you can get your hands on. Water with chlorine or iron and that sort of thing or lime can really destroy a whiskey and can really transform it into something you don't want to be. So in Auckland where I am right now, there's a lot of chlorine in our water so I add the water on top, go through the filter and you get this nice pure water. Now I use this whiskey jug, it's really good because it lets you add water to the whiskey by the drop. Now some people use a teaspoon or you can use a straw if you just hold the top. So what you want is just a few little drops. And when you add a few little drops, look really closely about when you first add water to it because uh, you'll see a kind of like an oily kind of reaction going on. That's the really good th thing about water. What it actually does is it agitates the molecules in the whiskey and it creates a chemical reaction where it separates the esters, the taste one, taste molecules from the alcohol molecules. And it actually does a very similar thing as when rain hits a dry pavement, you know, it brings out the smells. Or say you've got a wine and you're swirling it, the air in the wine will really bring the smell out. That's exactly what water does. So I actually, when you add water to whiskey, it can actually make the flavors stronger. You know, it's been sitting there and it kind of unlocks those flavors. Um, just a few drops can just start that chemical reaction. So that's what you want to do. Yeah, so much stronger flavors going on there. So this bottle was bottled at 46%, so that's great with a few drops of water. Brings those aromas out. If you've got a car strength whiskey, like either of these, this is the Abelor Abana, and this is the Glen Farkless 105. Now this is 60% alcohol, and this is 60.5. Eight, batch 61. These are car strength whiskies. So when you put these in a glass, you're probably gonna need quite a lot more water. The car strength is basically, when it comes out of the cask, you're not adding anything to it, it goes straight in the bottle. As opposed to other bottlings, 
Most distillers will actually add water to it and they'll water it down to like 40% or that sort of thing. So those ones you probably don't need to add so much water, but these ones generally water is always recommended. In fact, it says on the back of this cast strength whiskey, I suggest adding a little water to fully explore the 105's great depth. So the distillers recommend adding water to this. Now what you don't want to do is drown the whiskey. You don't want to put heaps and heaps of water because then it's just going to completely drown it. You're going to lose all the flavour. So it's all about the balance. And then what's your palate, what's your nose saying to you? Is it saying this is too prickly? Is it saying this is you know, too strong or is it not strong enough? Um, and that's you just got to judge how much water you're adding to it. So I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it's been helpful for you differentiating between different types of glasses, why you use them. You know, I use all the different glasses, all for different reasons, for enjoying them, for appreciating them, find out what flavors are in them and that sort of thing. So yeah, now when you're sharing whiskey with others, don't tell them they're doing it the wrong way. You know, share your knowledge gracefully. There's so many different ways you can drink whiskeys and people have different taste buds. And as you grow in your whiskey experience, your preferences might change too. You might start liking cast-strict whiskeys more, or you might start liking smoky whiskeys more. So everything's always changing. And yeah, thanks for watching. You can join me on Instagram at First Fill Whiskey. And above all, share and enjoy. Beauty.